Um, we'll continue with research. The past couple of years, there has been a public debate um, where several professors and researchers indicated that the current financing model in Flanders stresses too much on publication. Um, Frau Paus, you agree with them? I think it's not that I agree that there should be stress on publication. This is what we rather do. As uh, academics, we like to publish. I think we have to keep it that way, that we like to publish and that we do not feel pressure to publish all the time and that we are reduced to a kind of publication machine. That is rather my argument. I think we want to be considered as full academics who like to teach, who like to publish, but where we take some uh, leverage out of this uh, scope on uh, publications. I would rather see a model at governmental level and also internally uh, VUB level where we indeed also, of course, acknowledge the importance of publications, that seems obvious, but where we also uh, try to incorporate parameters that also um, favorize a more interdisciplinary approach because I think that uh, many of the societal challenges that we are facing and increasingly facing just need this kind of interdisciplinary approach. It would take away the pressure on faculties to just have some fierce competition or amongst disciplines to only have a fierce competition and that we again take the next step to a, a science which I call an open science which uh, which is the new uh, paradigm, and we are willing to explore fully this uh, interdisciplinary approach. However, on the, the Flemish political level, there is, again, no political will to change this financing system. The rector-elect in Antwerp agrees that mm -hmm. it has to be different, but they... We, we see a lot of... It's, it's possible that the Flemish government sometimes is way behind what is happening in the world. So I think it's uh, important to say that uh, also in the world, um, things are changing. In the United States, and signed by the MIT, which is, I think, a nice institution, they agreed that uh, we should go away from only this pressure on high-impact journals and that we should consider the impact of research on society. Mm -hmm. I think this is the first tendency and I think we should take it seriously and I would also ask the government to take it seriously. Second, at the European level we see that ERCs, which are the most, uh, uh, of course, uh, the most attractive um, mandates, their people, the assessors, they also focus on what is the difference in the societal impact that you are making with your kind of research. So instead of only counting, people are triggered to answer the basic question that we have in university, what is the relevancy, what is the impact of your research on the broad societal challenges that we are facing? And I would just tell the government to look at that. Look at that. Frau Jonkers, do you agree? Okay, I uh, do have some things to, to uh, add here uh, in the sense that uh, maybe the Flemish government is on some uh, issues uh, a bit behind, eh? but if you look today on how uh, universities are financed in Flanders, uh, there is like uh, a model, a model with parameters and weights on these parameters, and 55% of uh, the weight is on um, uh, parameters that are purely educational, that have to do with students and, and number of courses uh, taken up by these students and the number of courses that the students don't fail but pass. Um, it's 45% on research and one third of that is on publications. Eh? So there is one third on publications, that's 15% in the whole model. Uh, it is true that you can imagine eh, that there is other things that are not so easily countable and eh, that should be taken into account also. But there's basically two big ways in which you can uh, divide money. Yeah? You can do it with a model yeah, where you introduce a couple of parameters, you weight them, and you have a consensus on the parameters and on the weight. Or you can do it in pure competition, yeah, where you have a call uh, for uh, a team, uh, and then there's a budget uh, involved, and then there's a kind of evaluation process, and the winner, well, takes it all, or the three winners takes it all. So there is these two ways of, of, of uh, deciding on who gets what kind of money. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if you want to measure societal impact, yeah, you will still need to find a way to, to measure it, yeah, to, 
to list it somewhere eh, and to have someone decide what is more and what is less and what is better and what is worse. Yeah? Where I do not uh, follow neither is in the idea that uh, interdisciplinary research is a different type of research and so that the classic parameters that you use eh, to, to count eh, impact, uh, that, that, that they would not work for that type of research. So I'm not uh, convinced on that. Uh, I do agree that there is a pressure, eh, a pressure on academics in general, uh, and that is uh, partly to do with the fact that we do have a job description that has this broad scope of things that we have to do, so that at some points we feel like clowns trying to keep uh, seven balls up in the air and that is not always easy eh? but I think there's like workload there is like the pressure to publish eh? and I think that pressure to publish is not so bad in the sense and if you, if you acknowledge the workload pressure how would you like to change that I think uh, the the answer on, on all this workload discussion is for me trying to find the right economy of scale and that is for like a department or a research group not have these small teams where like one or two professors with one or two assistants are trying to do the job there's a lot of practical things that you can do if you can find the right size for your team and that is about Team teaching, eh? sharing the load in teaching, like introducing new professors and not having them teach eh? five, six, seven courses from the first year. Um, I think finding the right level on which you can have a balance between professors, young researchers, and a couple of postdocs which are there to, to like build this ecosystem that I was talking about before, eh? and that you indeed uh, have a, a level on which the competition should not play between these individuals, that you should be glad that your colleague gets a good project, or that you should be glad of your colleagues published uh, a very important uh, paper. Mm -hmm. okay. But if I, yeah. I can uh, just uh, go on on that, that point, I, I think scale is, a, is to some extent an answer. What I say that we have to get away from this competitive, but, uh, this competition between faculties and disciplines and that interdisciplinarity surrounding some of the uh, high societal uh, research challenges desperately are in need of this interdisciplinary approach. So I think we should just go away a bit from interdisciplinarity and also be very aware that 80% of research uh, revenues or re research um, budgets go to 15% of uh, the research groups, only 50%. So if we can just uh, more or less uh, make the, the pie a bit bigger for all of us so that uh, indeed we can be happy that together with different people we have a research proposal uh, accepted. That would be, make a difference, I think. But is competition not a necessarily evil in an academic world? I think when competition, it, if you told, uh, say it's an evil, I think it, it's uh, already a bad connotation. I think we don't need evilness in, in academic uh, worlds. I think we need to work together to solve uh, problems that are more complex than uh, before. This is not to say that there's only room for just interdisciplinary research. I think from time to time you need to do very in-depth fundamental research into your own uh, discipline. And competition, we of course like uh, competition because we are academics, we like to be challenged, but when competition is felt as something really go becoming too fierce, then I think also from a society point of view, and as I put the human very central to the project, I think we are evolving in, in uh, the wrong direction. And the Ratenau Institute in uh, the Netherlands has just published a study where they also show the government that they are largely becoming too competitive on all these different uh, research streams and I think that this is a main thing to recognize as well. Mm -hmm. Can we be too competitive in an academic world where excellence is demanded of our professors? Well, I, I think at some uh, uh, points it be, uh, at some point it becomes really too competitive. If you see that in a certain channel, eh, you write proposals, there's this whole effort of writing the proposal, of evaluating the proposal, and then in the end you have like, like a 10% success rate. Eh? I think that is not reasonable. And then you can put uh, mechanisms in place to uh, 
do something about that, mechanisms to avoid uh, people uh, putting uh, in uh, seven proposals at the same time or something simple like that. But at some point you need to, s to decide who gets the money. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And it is not uh, right to do it purely on a competitive base as in a call with projects. Eh? You need to have another model where you at some point divide the money over the different parties eh, that need to do their job. Uh, and uh, I, I, the only thing that you can do is count. Yeah? Count, try to count in the right way the right things. Then you have a table eh, that gives you a picture of the situation. And then you make policy decisions based on the information that you have. And if at some point you say, this is important for our university, we want to invest in that particular niche, then you do so. Yeah, by taking the money from the big pot beforehand and uh, allocating it to a, per, a specific purpose. But at some point, you need to do the division.